Hello guys, welcome to lesson number 58 in our drawing series, Drawing Techniques for Beginners. We're starting to um, get some definition to our dog Myla's face now. Like I said towards the end of the last lesson, what I've continued to do is add the HB and the 2B in some of these darkest areas. So I've started to define our dog's ears and the shape of the face. Uh, we're going to continue with that today. We're going to be using our HB and 2B pencil. Uh, some of our uh, lighter areas we're going to keep taking out with our mono zero razor. I've got my kneaded eraser as well which I'll make into a point at one end and we've got our soft two inch brush as well so without further ado let's uh, let's start adding some of this value into the rest of our dog's face. Uh, it's been fantastic seeing some of your renditions so far of Myla uh, She's a she's a, a photogenic dog, that's for sure. I'm just going to start to bring out some of this darkness just around the eyes here. We've got lots of lots of lumps and bumps. This is obviously a very short-haired dog, and uh, because the hair is so short, what you end up with is you can see lots of the bone structure underneath. Uh, you might not have uh, have had so much of this to do. If you were with us on the shadow portrait that we did a couple of months back, uh, we did a, a Siberian Husky. I wanted to try and show you some techniques for drawing long hair. If you haven't seen that already, go and check it out. I really would advise going and having a look at that. But um, basically the Siberian Husky had much longer hair. And what you ended up with is less of the definition underneath the, the fur. And, and we really worked on the fur itself and, and how to get something that looks you know, rather fluffy, uh, which I think we made a good job of. But obviously with, uh, with this dog portrait, what we're gonna have now is we're gonna have a lot more of the underlying structures of the face uh, that you're, you, know, you would have missed in shadow. If this is the first time that you've visited my channel, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for clicking on that thumbnail. Uh, I, I really want to try and teach you guys some new tips, some new methods, but, but also for people that are already well versed in how to draw and how to add graphite and how to make things look realistic. I think it's just a nice, uh, a nice thing for us to do together. Uh, I've made a, a Facebook group, which is now nearly 4,000 people strong. Uh, there's a lot of people on there that are fantastic artists already but there's a lot of beginners too and it's just nice to sort of draw along together. I'm just picking out the darker areas with this HB pencil. What we found at the end of last lesson was I was going to just start by going into some of these areas with the 2B pencil but we found it was a little bit too grainy. Uh, I wanted to get rid of that grainy look so I, I'm going to put a base down of HB pencil now just so that we don't see the tooth of the paper coming through. The technique that I'm teaching you and if this is the first time that you've you've seen a method like this I would I would really recommend you going and checking out my essential pencil skills playlist. There are six lessons in there where I go through in depth the the way in which we're laying the graphite down. But I'm basically I'm not a, I'm not I'm not going to be using anything to blend. That's the that's the the key to this technique, we're going to use the pencils and only the pencils to blend. So I like to start with a harder pencil, particularly if we're doing a face, uh, something that's rather smooth, a, a baby's face or, a, you know, a, an adult's face, I guess, is, is, is still rather smooth. But um, we build up the value by going up and down the pencil grades and layering using what we call a tapered stroke. So if this is the first time that you're coming to the channel or you're watching this on the Facebook group, then it does look as though what I'm doing is scribbling, but I'm not. I'm not ever going in an upward direction with my pencil stroke. I'm pulling towards me, taking the pencil off as I get to the bottom of my stroke, and then I'm relaying. And the trick is to try and keep the pencil strokes as close together as possible so that we don't have huge gaps in between. But what also happens is if we're using the softer pencils, we start to get this grainy tooth of the paper coming through. So by laying a slightly harder base down, one of the 2H or 4H possibly, or in this case, the HB, we start to saturate 
the tooth of the paper and it ends up giving us a much much better and much more even distribution of the graphite so I'm just going to turn the paper slightly now I'm I'm going to focus on it's almost this eyebrow area um, although this is very short haired dog um, we still want to try and keep the pencil strokes going in the rough general direction and I can see that the fur on this if you want to call it an eyebrow the direction that it's going is in this horizontal path now because I'm only using my stroke in one direction it's important that I turn my paper just to keep the accuracy of my stroke and keep the realism up so we've got a darker patch even within this dark area so it's important that I do focus on that as well now I like to work in the darkest areas first build up a layer of graphite in the darker areas and then what happens is as we start to create the rest of the drawing around that those darker areas tend to stay the darkest areas so we don't ever lose our way and lose detail which is something that I've done an awful lot it's very easy to do that the graphite moves around so much particularly when we brush it we use our very soft brush we're not blending, like we, 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 we spoke about a minute ago, but we do give it a slight brush every now and then, particularly when we're doing hair. We always brush our hair. Uh, and what that means is it, it just starts to move some of the graphite around. And it's very easy to lose some of your details that you've worked hard to complete if we haven't got enough graphite on there already, it all becomes muddled together. So really important that we do highlight those darkest areas and we just keep working in the darkest areas and as we build the value up around those darker areas, we build the value up in the darker areas as well. So we can see now that the obviously what's happening with the, with the fur is the grain is coming down at an angle diagonally down now and and then it sort of fans out over the top of the eyebrow so we're just going to focus now on laying some of these pencil strokes down in a slightly different direction now so they are almost going diagonally from the top left corner to the bottom right corner of our paper that's the general direction and although this isn't going to be our finished value you know we're going to go darker in those areas maybe even into a 4b in some of those areas um, it's just the underlying texture that we're going to be able to keep because obviously we don't want this dog looking like a shiny object we don't want this to look like a a sculpture of a dog or a a metal statue of the job of the dog which is always the worry that if we get things too smooth and too um, too shiny looking, too reflective looking, you know, with very, very bright highlights and then some very, very dark areas. If we haven't got that underlying texture, it does make it look rather false and machined almost. So we're working with the tooth of the paper. We're following that general grain of the hair. And we're working in small sections, small patches. Now every few strokes what I'm doing is I'm just turning my pencil and what that does is it self sharpens our pencil so that we're not constantly having to sharpen our pencil which again is, is, is one thing for time, it makes it less time consuming but also it means that because we're not sharpening our pencil as much we're not wearing the pencils down as much as quickly and what that does for us is it saves us money we're not constantly having to buy new supplies okay so I'm going to use my brush now I'm just going to come into that section and just gently brush 
not getting too much of it into that eye because we we've worked quite hard in in that eye section and we've got some nice values in there and some highlighted areas so i don't want to brush too much of the value in there okay so let's uh, let's work a little bit on our nose now let's bring some value and some balance to this drawing now so we have this small crease that seems to emanate from the bottom up uh, that's on most nearly every dog that i've drawn there does tend to be this sort of I don't know what you want to call it. I guess it's where the two parts of the nose fold in on each other. Um, so we're going to start there. I'm going to put a little bit of 2B in there as well, just to make sure that I have got some definition in there. And then I can start to push the values in the surrounding areas a little bit easier without the worry of losing where that center mark lies similar with the top of these nostrils here just pushing some of the 2b into that top section because that's going to be our darkest area and you can see how the lights coming from the right hand side the top right that this is going to be a slightly darker section of the nostril and similar on this left hand side as we're looking at it okay now we're going to build from the edge there's almost a a dark band around this dog's nose a little bit like the the eyes the irises you have that darkish band now i'm not just going in and drawing a line i'm still using this tapered stroke to build the value up i'm being very cautious not to damage the tooth of the paper and i'm sure that some of you that have been with me for the duration of these lessons you know it's three or four months now that we've been working together on these projects um, you'll have heard me banging on about protecting the tooth of the paper every sheet of paper that we use if we were to look at a cross section of it under a microscope is going to have little peaks and little troughs it isn't completely flat completely smooth and we never want to be working with graphite on something that's completely smooth it's those peaks and troughs that actually help pull the graphite off of our pencil but um, using the blending stump although it does start to move the graphite around for you and it saves you a lot of time it makes it almost impossible to reverse to make corrections but also to get those very very subtle value changes that we're going to have particularly when we start looking at some of this fur around the muzzle you know it's not completely white there's a there's a build up of value in there lots of subtle changes you know we've got some highlighted areas amongst some darker areas now if i just bear down with my needed eraser in in areas like that it makes it impossible sorry not my needed eraser my um my tortillion my paper stump uh what happens is it makes it very difficult for me to get those subtle changes and it's those small details that ultimately take our drawing from a level of of realism you know i've seen some brilliant super realistic work where people have been using tortillions and blending stumps but uh it makes it difficult to get those very close-up details right. So we can definitely see where the darker zones of this nose are. And we're going to work in those. This area just under here is darker than 
the edge above it. We've got a nice little highlight under there. And it's the contrast between your highlights and your darkest zones that is going to ultimately create the realism for you. You can make something look very realistic as, as long as you are developing the contrast between the two. See lots of drawings, some fantastic, you know, they've, they've really worked hard on their outline. They've got a very accurate drawing. The line works fantastic, but it's somewhat ruined because they've, uh, they've only really got mid values in there. They've not gone dark enough in the darkest areas and they haven't really protected the, the highlighted areas. Now, the lightest areas on our dog here are, are her eyes. We've got a very, very striking set of eyes there, um, partly made because they're very, very light eyes. The iris are very, very light. I think it's a trait that these Weimaramas have, that they have these very light, bluey type of color eyes, bluey green. Um, whereas a lot of other dogs, they just have rather dark irises. Um, again, I'm not a dog expert. I, I do have a dog uh, and she has very dark eyes. Very difficult to pick up the, the pupils in my dog's eyes. And I guess it's very similar to most dogs that it's very difficult. And I guess that's what is attractive about this dog. The eyes are very human-like. Um, there's very much a definition between the pupil, the iris, uh, the ring around the eye, and that's a, that's a very human quality or trait. So basically we need to, coming back to what I was saying, that I need to protect those highlighted areas. So I've identified them as the lightest areas. They need to remain the lightest areas throughout my drawing the entire time. If I start building contrast up in other areas and I start bringing the value up to that of the eyes, I lose what I've been working so hard on creating, which is those piercing eyes. And I'm only going to be able to get those eyes to look so piercing and have such a, a shine and a brightness to them if the value in other areas is brought up to the right level. So the, the dark patches around the eyes, the dark patches around the ears, the shadows under the chin, they all need to be ramped up so that they are in stark contrast to those eyes. And keep telling yourself and reminding yourself of that as you go through this process. What is it about this picture that we're drawing? And it can be a person, it can be an object, it can be whatever. But what are the key elements? I, I guess it's a little bit like if you, uh, if you ever see those people that draw those fantastic caricature pictures, the uh, cartoon caricatures. Now they have to very quickly sit somebody down in front of them and they very quickly need to identify what it is about that person that makes them look a certain way. So do they have big ears or are their eyes wide apart? And what they then do is they over-exaggerate that and it's very similar to what we're going to need to do in uh, all of our drawings. What are we going to focus on? And for me, it was the eyes. So I'm still working with my HB pencil. We do have, like we said, a little bit of the... Uh, the 2B in that nostril area and the crease. And it was important that we did that because you can start to see that as we're now building the value up around the rest of the nose, it would be very easy to lose the placement of the nostrils and 
that crease. So just brushing in a little bit there. So I'm going to continue working now on this left hand side of the nostrils of the, the nostrils, the nose area here, because again, as the light is coming down from this right hand edge, this is going to be our darkest area. And it's so dark around there that you almost can't see that dark band that we have in other areas. And we're going to go much darker in those areas in there. But we're not going to rush it. I'm not just going to start pushing on harder with my 2B pencil. I'm going to build the layers up. I'm going to knock back some of the value if I feel necessary. If I need to take some of the value out, I will do. And this area is not going to be one pencil value. I can remember when I first started drawing, I got very, very hung up on asking people what pencil they used in what area. And I was amazed that a lot of people couldn't answer that. And it wasn't a definitive, those eyes were a 7B and that nostril was a 6B and the highlighted area was a 2H because that's, for me, that's what I assumed was happening. But it's a combination of lots of different pencils. Although it's a, a highlighted area, there's gonna be a bit of HB in there. There's gonna be some 2H. The darkest areas are going to be a real combination of my harder pencils and a lot of my softer pencils as well. So rather than it being just one pencil that we're trying to allocate to certain areas and looking at a picture and saying, well, that's going to be 4H and that's going to be a 6B and this is going to be an 8B. It's this method and this process of building the values up in the darker areas and building them up in the lighter areas as well. And then knocking the value back, rebrushing, knocking the value back again. So I'm just going to take a little bit of value out just underneath this nostril area here now. And I'm using a point because again, this isn't a machined material. It's a naturally occurring material. It's a dog's nose and it isn't going to be uniform. It isn't going to all be the same texture, you're going to have lumps and bumps in there. And those lumps and bumps are going to be what takes our drawing to a, a level of realism that maybe some of you aren't used to doing. Maybe some of you are more into a cartoony look, which is fantastic. I've done hundreds of cartoon drawings. I'm very big on marker work. I've got a, a large set of Copic markers, which I haven't used for a while, actually. I've been on a bit of a, a graphite binge of, of late. I suppose I go through cycles. But um, when we're drawing for realism, it's so important that we capture those things, those areas that look machined need to look machined. Those areas that are natural and flowing and growing need to represent that. Particularly if it's something like hair. Some of the hair that I first originally started doing on. I used to draw a lot of celebrities, but they were all the same length hairs. The eyelashes were all the same length and regimented. 
And it was when I started to draw less, or I don't mean less in terms of how much I was drawing, but trying to get less detail in to every strand of hair and just working on generalizations. So the hair's generally falling in this direction. So I'm going to make a few pencil strokes in this direction. And then, you know, I can see that these eyelashes are all slightly different lengths. So I'm going to do that. And it's, it's around that time when I really started to find that my work was becoming more realistic. Now it's always important as well to try and mix up your textures because we, we can get contrast not only by darkening certain areas and lightening others, but we can also have a contrast in the textures that we're working with. So those beautifully shiny, marbly looking eyes in relation to the fur around them gives us a beautiful texture contrast. So when you're looking for reference images and you're just looking to practice your artwork, try finding some references that have got lots of different textures in there as well. So, you know, you might have the rough skin of an elephant uh, on the background of, of fluffy clouds. And the opportunity that you get with those textures to have a play around and and whatnot are invaluable, but also just bringing that realism. It's it's like having a wonderful plate of food in front of you that's got lots of different elements to it, different textures, different colours, and it um, it stops the person that's looking at it, its eyes, you know, becoming turned off by it and looking at the same thing, the same bland colours, the same textures. We've not got a huge amount of contrasting elements going on in our dog portrait here, but um, you know we can't always find such reference images. But it's definitely something that we, you know, there's always going to be something to work with. So I'm really going to focus on making those eyes look like the marbles, beautifully shiny, protecting that white spot getting some darker values within the pupils, even though, you know, we can look at it and we can see that they are very dark. They are darker in some places as the, as the, the lights reflecting and refracting from it. We have some areas that are darker than others and it's those little d details. We can see it's darker on this underside of the nose here. Now I really would suggest using your um, tapered stroke in, in one direction, so turning your paper more than I am doing on the video. Um, I'm trying to keep this paper orientated the best way so that you can see the drawing building up, but it's not necessarily how I would recommend doing things particularly if you're learning i don't want you to be putting your hand into strange and odd contorted positions so turn the paper so that you've got a nice accurate stroke starting to be produced because we're laying the graphite on. So I think you can see where we're going with this now. Um, keep darkening the, the edges of this nose and start to try and bring some of the value out into the top of the nose. I'm going to start to add a little bit of value underneath here as well. Um, and I think we're sort of on track now and I can sort of leave you with that. So towards the end of the next video, uh, I think we'll be in a situation where we've got most of the value in 
uh, the fur and we can start adding some of those fine white hairs with our Mono Zero eraser. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications icon so that you don't miss any of the videos when they are released. And um, having a lot of fun with this dog. Don't forget to post your progress on the group. And uh, I'm going to spend another hour or so on this. Bring some of the darkness into underneath this mouth area here. Um, but like I say, have some fun with it. Don't go too far ahead. We're still only on the 2B pencil. Keep taking out some of the value in the nose. And uh, have some fun with it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.